Hey everyone, it's Adam here from Ads Productions with the review of the Philips 32 inch curved monitor, specifically the Moda 328C7 model. This is a 32 inch display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 and obviously you can use the 144 Hz feature. The response time of the display is 4 milliseconds and the total weight of the screen that's without any of the packaging but with the stand this comes to about 7 kilograms. The aspect ratio is 16 by 9 and this is a TFT LCD display. It's also LED backlit, and the display features approximately 16.7 million colours. The screen's design. I really can't find any faults in the first glimpse design, so like what you look at when you sit down for the first time in front of the screen. The only thing I can see that's a little bit strange is the Philips little tag that's underneath the centre of the screen. It's got the Philips logo on it and it lights up with an LED. You can actually turn this off, I'll go into that a little bit later. But anyway, it just seems like a not so subtle way of putting the Philips brand on the display when they could have just put it as a branded small subtle logo on the actual frame of the monitor but instead they choose to put it directly underneath as a tab that glows up. Seems a bit weird but hey, that's the only real first look, first impression design feature that stands out as a little bit iffy. But the rest looks stunning. The stand that comes pre-built into the screen is very, very well built and very sturdy. It actually adds a fair bit of weight to the screen. It also gives you that confidence that it's a well built and sturdy monitor that's not going to be collapsing anytime soon. Having said that, the monitor tilt is fairly restrictive and I do feel like they could have done a lot better by allowing perhaps a swivel or even just more flexibility so that you can tilt the monitor back more and forwards more. For a big curved screen, there is not much movement allowed on the screen, which I guess is what they're going for, but some people want to tilt it back and some people want to tilt it forward. I guess that's just another small factor to be aware of. But at 32 inches, do you expect it to be that flexible? And do you expect it to move that much? I'll leave that decision up to you. The inputs on the back are a DVI port, an HDMI port, a display port, a power port, and an audio out port. All the basics, but they get the job done. The power button is behind the screen, and obviously this has confused a fair few people to the point that they've had to put a little sticker on the bottom right hand corner to show people that it is in fact behind the screen. I really don't think it would have hurt the design aesthetic to have the power button and possibly a separate menu navigation button on the very front of the monitor, just like your traditional monitors where you reach directly down on the bottom of the screen in front of you to change the menu display, the brightness and even the power on off. Saying that though, having the power button and the menu navigation on the back of the screen does allow for the front of the screen to be a lot cleaner, a lot more sleek and just overall a better looking display. As with any standard power button, it's once for on and once for off. However, unlike other power buttons, it also doubles as the menu navigation toggle button whatever you want to call it. If you push up this allows you to toggle between the input types. These include VGA, DVI, HDMI and DisplayPort. If you push left this allows you to enable a feature called Smart Image. This basically allows you to choose between different profiles that changes the contrast and brightness with a few other settings to optimize your screen for whatever game or scenario you are playing. Included within Smart Image are a few presets. You can do Gamer 1 and Gamer 2, which allows you to save a customized setting. So let's say you find the perfect setting of your screen for that certain game. You can save this to preset 1 or 2. Another example of a preset would be the FPS one. This improves dark themes in games, allowing you to see hidden objects in dark areas. Or the racing one, which adapts the display with a faster response time, increases the color, along with image adjustments. So you can sort of see how they're trying to cater for all sorts of gamers and media consumers. This is a really, really nice idea. However, I'd have liked it if they'd included 
a little bit more of a description for each of the modes, describing roughly what it will do and how it will affect the performance. I really do think, especially the presets that you can customise yourself, it's a really, really handy feature to have on such a big and impressive screen. If you move the menu toggle down, this will initiate Smart Size, which will enable you to change the screen view of the Philips gaming display that you've got in front of you to suit your preference. For example, if you're playing a game that natively would rely on a much smaller resolution, you can change this to go to exactly that resolution, meaning you're playing or consuming whatever media in the resolution that it was designed and intended for. Moving the toggle right brings up what I would refer to as the main menu, which consists of the input menu, picture, here you can change the brightness, the contrast, turning on and off smart response, smart contrast, smart frame, and much more. You also have the audio menu. This allows you to mute as well as change the volume of the inbuilt speakers. They're pretty good, but they're monitor speakers, so they're as good as you would expect. They're not really intended to be your main speakers that you use all the time, but when you need them, they do the job. Then there's smart size. This allows you to change your display resolution to pretty much any other which I think is a hidden gem, as sometimes for certain applications and games, it is actually nice to be able to use other resolutions so that you can use them as they were intended, instead of upscaling to the modern large sizes. An example I can think of for this would be if you were using an emulator to emulate, let's say, an old PS1 or PS2. You could decrease the resolution so much that it would look like you were playing the PS1 on a screen instead of having it emulated, it just it just has a nicer feel to it to play it in its native resolution rather than playing it on a large scale resolution in a small window. I don't know, that's what I would prefer to use it for. I'll let you guys figure your own uses out for it. But a really smart hidden gem nevertheless. Then you have colour, this allows you to change the colour temperatures along with language. Then it's OSD, which stands for on-screen display. Essentially, you can change the settings of the menu that you're looking at. You can change things like how long it takes for the menu to automatically go away from the screen so that you can focus on your media, as well as the transparency. The last one on the menu is the settings one. This allows you to change the screen's horizontal and vertical positioning, as well as allowing you to turn off that Philips light up tab that's on the front of the screen. You can also change how bright this LED is. You've probably just heard a few words there in that last section that don't really make any sense, but allow me to elaborate and explain to you exactly what they are. Smart response. This is the technology within the Philips displays that speeds up pixel response if motion blur is an issue. Smart contrast. Smart contrast is basically when the contrast of the screen will automatically change depending on what the screen detects. For example, if you're looking at a light or a very bright Word document, the contrast will change, and it will also change if you're looking at something very dark. Essentially, it's trying to give you the best viewing experience. It doesn't always hit the nail on the head, but it comes very close, and I am quite impressed with it. When it comes to the actual performance of the screen and using the 144Hz display feature, you have to remember that you need a fairly decent graphics card to be able to fully utilize the 144 Hz display. Because for example, if you're trying to play games at a high frame rate, let's say 120 FPS, but you only have a 60 Hz monitor, like most standard, you will run into problems such as screen tearing, because the monitor will be refreshing the image that it's displaying 60 times a second, whereas you are trying to force it to display 120 frames per second. So it's gonna cause problems there. So make sure you have a beefy graphics card that will fully utilize this display. It's also a waste of time to actually run more frames per second than your monitor can handle, because essentially you're rendering frames that you're not seeing, so it's wasting resource. That being said though, running 144 hertz on this screen is absolutely amazing. It's stunningly smooth. You can see all of the frames per second in all of their glory. It's absolutely worth going from 60 hertz to 144 hertz. And this display right here proves that categorically. The really fast gameplay with first person shooters and racing games is really incredible on this screen. It really does highlight the technology behind it and the massive refresh rate of 144 Hz, just like it would in any other game. Just like any other monitor review that you're going to see on YouTube, I would really recommend going to either a friend's house that's got one, a tech store that's got one set up, just so you can see the massive difference and the value of the high refresh rate that screens like this give you. It's that first gameplay going from what you're used to using 
to 144 Hz to when you realise how smooth it is at such high frame rates, that's when you know you've made the right decision, and I really do think this screen will make you think that as well. I also use this screen heavily for video editing. I've gone from a 23 point something inch Dell screen to this 32 inch screen. And I can say the color, the sharpness, and the size of the screen really does allow me to use Sony Vegas, put all the clips in the timeline, have everything visible, drag and drop, cut, all in one big display so I can see what's going on at all times. I just feel a lot more efficient with this screen instead of tabbing in and out of maximize windows thinking, oh, wait a minute, I need to import this from here. I need to reopen that and increase the size. Yeah, it's just these big screens with such good display like this, I just like them a lot. Again, there's probably some bias having come from a smaller screen, but I'm just giving you my honest opinion about what I've found and my daily use, whether it be gaming or video editing. It excels at both. I also decided to run a few ghosting tests and I could not see any noticeable problems with the four millisecond panel we have here. So if you're worried about that, don't be. Go ahead and plug up any PlayStation 4, any high-end PC, run FPSs, racing games, whatever you want, you will not see any ghosting. Overall then, despite the slightly strange navigation and or menu system, and a somewhat restrictive positioning system for the screen, like the tilting forwards and backwards, this is actually an excellent display that performed really well in a multitude of scenarios, be it video editing or playing fast paced games. And if you're looking for a reasonably priced high end monitor, to enjoy your multimedia and games on them. And at approximately $550 New Zealand, or approximately 400 US, this monitor is absolutely worth it, and you should definitely consider it. Either way, 1080p, 144 hz 32 inches, curved, for the price, you really can't argue with that. And you look online at similar screens, this one is a direct competitor. Thanks very much for watching. This has been Adam from Ads Productions with the review of the Philips 32-inch curved display.